It's supposed to be the tomb for Khufu, but no mummy's ever been found in a pyramid. So gun to my head, I think they were used to generate energy. And that's what Nikola Tesla was trying to do. It's the same technology. Something strange connects Nikola Tesla to a structure built thousands of years ago in the Egyptian desert. Tesla believed that the earth itself held a constant supply of energy and that this energy could be pulled from the ground and sent wirelessly across the world. He proved this idea on a small scale with glowing bulbs placed far away from any wires. His early work showed promise, but after he died, most of his research disappeared. Many claim there is no evidence left of his wireless power experiment, but the truth may not be hidden in a lost notebook. It might be standing in the desert, towering over the sand, waiting for someone to understand it. The Great Pyramid of Giza might not be a tomb at all. It may be the oldest power plant on Earth. For generations, we were taught that the Great Pyramid was built as the final resting place of the Pharaoh Khufu. But the structure does not behave like a tomb. There are no paintings, no carvings on the walls, and no treasures. There is not even a mummy. In fact, no mummy has ever been found inside any pyramid. The Egyptians treated their pharaohs as gods, yet this enormous structure, which would have been their most sacred place, is empty and silent. It is made of long shafts, tight passages, strange chambers, and precise geometry. Nothing about it resembles a traditional grave. It feels more like a device, a purpose-built machine. What that purpose was is still debated, but the old idea of it being a tomb becomes weaker with every discovery. The pyramid's design is beyond impressive. The base is leveled with extreme precision. The corners align almost perfectly with the true north. The sides differ by only inches in length, although each side is more than 755 feet long. The structure contains over 2 million blocks of stone, some weighing up to 40 tons. Even more surprising is that the pyramid has eight sides, not four. Each side is slightly bowed inward, forming a subtle indentation that is almost impossible to notice from the ground. This design can only be seen from the air or during specific lighting moments on the equinoxes. The shape is precise and intentional. It suggests advanced engineering, not simple stacking. There are also mathematical secrets inside the structure. The pyramid height multiplied by 43,200 gives almost the exact polar radius of Earth. The base perimeter multiplied by the same number gives the Earth's equatorial circumference. The number 43,200 is also linked to the length of day and night during an equinox. The builders clearly understood astronomy and geometry at a level far beyond what historians believe they should have known. If this structure was only meant to be a tomb, why include such advanced measurements? Why design it with such extreme precision? It makes more sense that this structure had a functional purpose, not a symbolic one. The materials used inside the pyramid strengthen this idea. Most of the structure is made from local limestone, but the outer casing stones came from Tura, almost 500 miles away. These stones were polished smooth and acted as electrical insulators. The inner chambers were built from rose granite, a material filled with quartz. Quartz produces electricity when pressure is applied. This principle is used in modern devices like watches, radios, and sensors. The king's chamber, the queen's chamber, and the grand gallery all contain granite with extremely high quartz content. The passageways are lined with it too. A quartz-filled structure can interact with vibrations. It can create electricity when compressed or excited by sound waves. This is not a guess. It is a physical property of quartz itself. If the pyramid was designed to harness vibration, then its materials are exactly what it would need. One of the most interesting theories comes from engineer Christopher Dunn. He suggested groundwater created vibrations below the pyramid. When the water moved through the rock, it generated sound waves that traveled upward. These waves were amplified by the shape and angles of the pyramid. The queen's chamber may have been used to create hydrogen gas. Two shafts leading into the chamber contain traces of chemicals such as hydrochloric acid, zinc chloride, and ammonium chloride. These chemicals produce hydrogen when combined. The gas would then move into the Grand Gallery, a long and steep passage lined with granite. This gallery naturally resonates at 440 hertz, an F-sharp tone. 
Many believe this tone matches Earth's natural frequency. As the hydrogen filled the chamber, the sound waves shaped the gas into standing patterns. The pressure increased. The granite vibrated. The stone itself produced an electrical charge. The entire structure may have been designed to build energy in stages, moving it upward like a musical instrument. At the top of the grand gallery is a small opening into the king's chamber, sized perfectly for hydrogen microwaves to pass through. The king's chamber also resonates at 440 hertz. Above it are five layers of granite beams separated by air gaps. These beams have rough surfaces on top, as if shaped to tune the resonance. When the chamber vibrated, the beams would vibrate with it, amplifying the sound and the electrical charge. Anyone who is blown across the top of a bottle has caused a Helmholtz resonance. The king's chamber acts like a massive version of this same effect. When combined with hydrogen gas, quartz vibration, and architectural precision, the pyramid may have functioned as the heart of a power generation system. Modern science adds another layer to the mystery. In 2018, researchers bombarded the pyramid with radio waves and discovered that it naturally concentrates electromagnetic energy inside its chambers and beneath its base. The effect peaks at wavelengths between 200 and 600 meters. This proves that the pyramid responds to external energy, like a tuned device, not a random pile of stone. In 2019, another study showed that granite pushed electrons to its surface when it vibrated. This effect, when multiplied by the enormous mass of the pyramid, could generate real electrical potential. These discoveries show that the materials and geometry of the structure were not accidental. Someone knew how to build a machine that interacted with Earth's natural forces, this leads back to Tesla. His Wardenclyffe Tower was built on an aquifer, just like the pyramid. Copper and iron rods extended deep into the ground. When electricity entered the tower, it could spread through the earth and into the air. Tesla demonstrated wireless lighting and believed he could power entire cities. But his project threatened companies that controlled copper, steel, power lines, telegraph poles, and fuel. JP Morgan, who funded Tesla at first, pulled his support when he realized Tesla planned to give the world free energy. After Tesla's death, many of his papers disappeared. People still search for them today, but maybe they never needed to be found. Maybe the idea Tesla tried to bring back to the world already existed thousands of years earlier. There is also evidence that the pyramid may have suffered a catastrophic event. Scorch marks on the ceiling of the Grand Gallery, cracked granite beams in the King's Chamber, and thick salt layers inside the shafts suggest intense heat and pressure. Some researchers argue that the structure experienced an explosion, possibly caused by chemical buildup or a sudden release of energy. Others think a global disaster may have damaged the pyramid. Geological evidence shows Egypt was once wet, not dry. The Sphinx and surrounding walls show water erosion that could only have occurred during heavy rainfall, possibly more than 10,000 years ago. Around that time, a massive solar event may have struck Earth. Ice sheets melted rapidly. Floods swept across continents. Lightning storms hit with incredible power. Many species died almost instantly. Human life survived only in caves or protected places. If the pyramid was operating during this period, it may have been damaged beyond repair. If the Egyptians came long after this event, they may have found a silent machine and assumed it was a sacred monument. They may have reshaped and repurposed what already existed. They may have written their own stories onto structures built by people who came long before them. Modern archaeology often rejects this idea, but discoveries continue to challenge old beliefs. The more we learn, the more the power plant theory becomes possible. If the pyramid once created clean and unlimited energy, its builders achieved something humanity still struggles with today. Tesla tried to revive that dream, but he faced strong opposition. Oil, coal, and wire-based energy made many people wealthy. Free energy would have threatened entire industries and the nations that depended on them. Tesla died alone, with many of his greatest ideas ignored. The world chose a different path. It chose fuel, pollution, power lines, and constant conflict over resources. 
If the Great Pyramid once worked the way Tesla imagined, then humanity's future might lie not in building new machines, but in finally understanding the ones our ancestors left behind.